Good morning. How's it going, YouTube? Uh, all right. Let's make this happen. Don't you lines know you're supposed to lay clear? I have to teach you every time. All right, guys. the truck see if we can get it right with our glide I haven't tried this in a long time you know let's see if we can get it close okay Tucker's girlfriend Jacqueline this is how you don't do it down have an entrance from this end. Motor's dead. Oh, I might be short. I might be short. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, I'm going to be short. Well, maybe not. Oh, that's terrible. Maybe I can glide it out. I do it properly you know it's good to practice this guys I haven't practiced this in a while and I always think to myself oh I can stick it in a tight spot but you know it doesn't hurt to practice what I usually do is I'll set up to be long and then I can do a wing over if I want to I'm gonna be short again this is good to practice this yeah oh I might not be that short but if I had to, yeah, let's try it again. The glide sessions from Preston, British Columbia. The spot landing. I'm going through my wake. Oh, this is looking better. I want to land right by the truck. Not by the windsock, right by the truck. Oh, I do a little sachet. Lead off some altitude. Set that thing in there. Yes. That's better. And there goes the engine again, guys. Oh, my. 
my goodness, what are we gonna do? Okay, we gotta get by the truck, man. Okay, so one of the things you can do is you can look at your vehicle or a tree, and when you're looking at it and you're flying towards it, if things are showing up behind it, then you're high. If things are disappearing behind that object, then you're low. So that's what I do. This one's looking good. I'm liking this. This is a perfect. I'm gonna go on the gas. This would have been perfect. I just don't want to touch it down. All right, guy, I killed the motor, guys. This one's from real, from a higher altitude, farther over. We're gonna see if we can put this thing close to the truck. So remember, if you're looking at an object near where you wanna land, if, if things are showing up from behind that object, then you're going to make it to that object. If not, overshoot it. If things are disappearing, like that object is growing and things are disappearing, the terrain is disappearing behind that object, then you're not going to make it. And that's the simplest way to find your line of sight for where you're going to land. Now, right now I'm a little high. Lead off a little bit of altitude. Things are still, yeah, no, that's looking pretty good. I'm liking it, that's pretty close to the truck. Touchdown right at the truck. So that's how you do it. Spot landing your paramotor, guys. It's something none of us probably practice as much as we should. Um, if you guys do spot landing challenges and stuff, and that's really cool. And the one trick that I have for doing spot landings is that if you're looking at an object, and I don't know if you can picture this, but so you see this object. When you're coming in to land, look at the top of that object, and if objects, so take this red button for example. If that button starts to show up behind that object, that means you're gonna clear that object. That means your angle of flight is such that this whatever object, and I was using my truck trailer today, if that looks like it's descending and things are showing up behind it, that means you're gonna clear it. If things are disappearing and you're taking that red button, and that red button is disappearing behind that object, you're not going to make it over that object. So the ideal way that I do it, and especially if I have to land somewhere tight, if I can pick an object and it can be anything, it can be a small tree or a shrub or whatever, and I try to have it fixed so that my angle of flight, of descent, to land on this point, makes it so that no objects are going up or down behind that. In other words, it's stationary through that plane of flight. If things are showing up behind it, you're gonna go long. If things are disappearing behind it, you're going to go short. That's uh, one of the biggest ways that I use, and I don't practice it enough, and I'm actually gonna start practicing it more. And as you've seen in the video, the first couple times I was off a little bit, and after two or three times practicing, I had it nailed right on and it but you just have to pay attention to find an object in your line of landing so you need it to be fairly close to where you're landing you can have it farther it can be a tree farther out to get a general glide or a house or a building or whatever you can have a general sense of that but if it, as you get closer you need to pick something smaller and you can do small sachets or wing overs to adjust that height if you need to get down if you're out of power all you have is down. So I like to leave it till the last second. I've landed in some really tight places in my life. I landed in the backyard in town one time at a body shop. And that was years and years and years ago. And I know you're not supposed to land in town. But anyway, I did. And I always wait till the very last second. And then I'll whoo, swoop it in. I see lots of videos of guys. And they just keep flying a circle, a circle, a circle. Until they wind up wherever they wind up. You can actually better pick your spot 
by watching objects and seeing what's appearing behind or what's disappearing behind them to better judge and granted on a hot day or whatever you're going to have some some glide out if you get some bubbles coming off the ground but for the most part keep an eye on and practice this go out and find a field where there's a little tree and just practice it and see if you can tell what i'm talking about about things showing up behind you're going to make it to it things disappearing behind you're not uh that's the one of the best ways to to land in tight areas when you have to coming into a ball diamond over a set of power lines and you might need to be right as close to those lines as you can be so you don't go long on the field you watch the top of that power pole and that'll tell you whether you're going to make it if things are showing up behind it you're going to make it over providing the air doesn't change you hit a sink pocket and you always got to allow for that i prefer to leave extra room make sure i'm going to clear the obstacle and then i'll do a small wing over and another wing over in and get myself down to that level that i need to be remember when you're flying you fly it all the way to the ground just because you're set up on an approach for a landing doesn't mean that now i just have to fly straight and hope for the best you can do a small wing over and drop altitude quick really quick back in the day i used to use big ears i'd pull big ears to get into a tight area and one time even i was doing uh, weight shift turns with big ears in and then when i did my last turn I popped the one big ear out on the high side so it dove me down and it caused me to dive faster and swoop into a tight area like that so try that out guys check that out next time you're flying if you're new in the sport and you don't already know if things are appearing behind it you're going to make it over top if things are disappearing behind it you're not going to make it over top and that gives you a nice glide angle and an idea of where you're actually going to land so anyways hope you enjoyed the video uh, stay tuned to the next one. I don't know what's calling for thunder showers this afternoon, but I'm hoping to go out for a nice evening sunset flight. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, guys, peace out. Take care. That Canadian dude over and out. See you in the next one.